Hello and welcome to renovating a vintage horizontal twin cylinder model steam engine. This is part 12 and part 12 starts the way that part 11 finished with the same clip showing me about to fit the piston ring to the newly made piston. I've made a pair of these pistons and the first thing I have to do is machine a groove in them to take the piston ring. And that horrible noise you can hear is called chatter. The piston is supported on a piston rod with a 2BA thread and it's just not rigid enough. So what I'm doing is using the centre drill to make a conical hole and then I'm using a live centre in the conical hole in the end of the piston. After one little burst of noise after all the chatter is cleared, it cuts beautifully. Even if this was a cast iron piston, it would cut equally as well as this, although I would have to probably slow the speed down. There are distinct tolerances required for using silicone o-rings as piston rings. The ring does not need to be too tight, nor does it need to be too slack. There are various books full of data that will tell you what to do with this. One of them is probably a Zeus book, and in case you don't understand my Yorkshire accent, that's Zeus as in the Greek god, and also in the Model Engineer's Handbook. These are both very useful items to have in the workshop. And here is a finished piston against the old one. And as you can see, I've drilled two holes in the drilling machine using a centre drill, which I've not bothered showing because that's very simple. So this is a good match and a good improvement on the original piston. And the first thing to do, as usual, is lubricate it. And when using silicone o-rings, you must use steam oil. Do not use motor oil or machine oil. This makes them sticky. It is also very important to have the correct groove depth. If the o-ring puts too much pressure on the outer wall of the cylinder, it will just wear flat and become inefficient. This piston fit is about right. It's not tight and it's not slack. It must not be so tight that you have to force it into the cylinder because you don't really need the piston ring to put too much pressure against the side of the cylinder. This one seems to be just about right. It went into the cylinder very easily. I did it slowly so you could see it being done. It was not a hard job to push it into the cylinder. This is still a little experimental because I am concerned about the hole from the top oilers in the middle of the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is run the engine for a while and see how it goes. If the piston seal gets worse, I'll have to rethink and possibly put liners in there. But for the moment, it's looking encouraging. The actual piston has a much larger surface area of piston in contact with the side of the cylinder. I will see what happens in due course. Here I'm using a pair of circlet pliers to screw the piston rod into the crosshead. As you can see, it is also rotating the gland nut. This is not a problem, I'll just screw it back in when I pack it. With the video speeded up, here I'm fitting the second piston, which feels very much like the first one. These cylinders are quite accurately machined. With both of the pistons in place, I'm now turning over the engine to see what it feels like, and it feels good. No undue knocking and no undue tight spots. It's a little tighter than it was in the first place before I dismantled it, but you would expect that. Not only are the new parts in the engine, just disturbing the old fits and tightening things up causes problems. I'm putting some compressed air into the engine to see what the pistons are doing. Obviously it's not going to run without the cylinder covers being bolted back on. This clip shows me packing the stuffing gland with some graphited yarn. This graphited yarn, as I've mentioned before, I unpicked from a larger piece. And it's really good stuff. It's not very graphited, but by the time it gets the oil in it, it's fine. If you're doing this job, be very careful not to damage the internal thread if you're using a screwdriver to poke the yarn in. Always having the correct type of spanner to hand is a big problem. So I usually use this. This is a very old Barco, that's B-A-H-C-O, adjustable spanner. It's about 30 years old and it's as good now as it was when I bought it. And here I'm carefully tightening the gland nut. Very important when you do this job also, do not put too much pressure on it. Do not over tighten the gland nut. What's likely to happen is A, you could strip the gland nut, which would be a disaster. Or B, you could put too much pressure on the packing, which in turn puts too much pressure on the piston rod and will score the piston rod when it starts to run. As a general rule, once you think that the gland nut is tight enough, back it off about a sixteenth of an inch. 
the engine must continue to run freely like this, with the stuffing glands tightened up and the pistons in place. That's about it for this episode. What I need to do next, I think, is make the gasket for the cylinder end cover, then try some air in the engine and set the valve timing. Then I should be able to run each side individually, which is the best way to set the valve timing perfectly, followed by making a collector pipe for the inlets so I can run both cylinders together. Another small thing to do to finish off the engine is to paint the cylinder cladding and fit the exhaust pipes. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.